This year, however, there has been a change in the statistics. Filtered tips represented less than 2% of the total in 1952. In 1955, more than 20% are filter tips, and the figure is rising. There is a clear indication that the relationship between cigarettes and health has caused this change. The cigarette industry, aware of this fact, and fully cognizant of its responsibility, has organized the Tobacco Industry Research Committee. Its scientific director is the eminent cancer investigator, Dr. Clarence Cook Little head of the Jackson Memorial Laboratory at Bar Harbor, Maine. Uh, Dr. Little, have any cancer-causing agents been identified in cigarettes? No, none uh, whatever, uh, either in cigarettes or in any uh, product of smoking as such. Uh, this is interesting in a way because there are many known cancer-forming substances in tar and I'm sure that research in this field will continue. People are bound to look for cancer-causing uh, agents in all kinds of material. Uh, it is interesting that uh, certain of the published data uh, seem to show an association between uh, certain types of cancer, or perhaps cancer in general, and excessive use of cigarettes. Now, we're very interested in finding out what kind of people are heavy smokers and what kind are not. Uh, not everybody is uh, a smoker. Not everybody who smokes is uh, equally heavy smoker. And uh, what determines these selections on the part of people? Uh, is it a different nervous type of person that smokes a great deal? Is it a person who is reacting differently to strain or stress because it is very clear that certain people just can't, can't take it as well as others. And the fact that they are of this type may very well mean that they establish certain habits and it's conceivable at least that uh, intensive and excessive use of any uh, agent might be one of the habits that they established. Dr. Little, you are chairman of the Scientific Advisory Board of the Tobacco Industry Research Committee. What, what is the purpose of the committee? Well, the purpose of the committee is to study in every possible way the relations between uh, smoking and human health. The uh, Tobacco Industry Research Committee has uh, put at the disposal of the Scientific Advisory Board uh, first $500,000 and then doubled that amount. And uh, I have every reason to believe that uh, as the scientific board finds projects and plans that are worthwhile, that that does not represent the final limit of support. And none of the research is done in any uh, laboratories owned by the tobacco industry as such. Uh, it is all done at various colleges, institutions, medical schools, laboratories throughout uh, the country. Uh, that's an important point, I think, because there might be an idea that the industry was trying to set up a limited or restricted piece of experimental work. Suppose the tremendous amount of research now going on, including that of the Tobacco Industry Research Committee, were to reveal that there is a cancer-causing agent in cigarettes. What then? Well. Uh, if it was found by somebody working uh, under the Tobacco Industry Research Grant, it would be made public immediately and uh, just as broadly as uh, we could make it, and then efforts would be taken to attempt to remove that substance or substances. I'd like to say this, however, that I have heard uh, a sort of a point of view, and I'm not naming this again at any one individual, but a point of view that says, let's uh, eliminate the agent in tobacco that is harmful. Well, it seems to me that we can't possibly eliminate an agent that hasn't yet been identified or the presence of which hasn't yet been proven. 